G'day, Daz here. If your vehicle's had that dreaded check engine light come on and your vehicle's running rough or is down on power, keep watching and I'll show you how to fix it. Chances are if your check engine light has come on and you've noticed that your vehicle has been running a bit rough, especially when it's cold, when you first started up, uh, the idle's a bit all over the place and on acceleration, you're finding that the vehicle is down on power chances are that you have a blocked catalytic converter. Now, that is a major problem, but it doesn't have to be expensive to fix. Uh, there are several ways you can go with that. Uh, one is to completely replace the catalytic converter, which is expensive. Um, another option is to replace your catalytic converter with a second-hand unit, which will be cheaper, but you're still going to have an old catalytic converter, uh, which is partially blocked or maybe even fully blocked uh, right from the get-go or you can just leave your catalytic converter where it is and clean it while you drive. That is the cheapest and best option because you don't have to make any modifications to your vehicle. You can basically drive your vehicle for half an hour and it will clean itself and that will in most cases make your check engine light go out. It's going to make those codes like uh, P420 and P430 um, for a blocked catalytic converter uh, below efficiency. It's going to make those codes disappear or you can reset them and they won't be coming back. Now the vehicle we're working on today is a 2008 Jeep Cherokee and this vehicle has the 3.7 litre petrol engine. So this is the gasoline engine 3.7 litres in a V6. Now this vehicle was built in 2008, it has an interesting history because it wasn't sold in Australia uh, until 2010 as a brand new vehicle. And from what we found out that the vehicle uh, appeared at the Tokyo Motor Show in 2009 and it also appeared at a motor show in Sydney and maybe Melbourne in Australia before the vehicle was sold as a brand new vehicle uh, to its first uh, private owner in 2010. Now, this particular vehicle has traveled 134,000 kilometers, which I'll work that in, out into miles. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, got me there. It's something around about 80, 80 something thousand miles off the top of my head. I'll put on the screen how many miles that's done. Um, now, when I got this vehicle a few weeks ago, um, I bought it at a dealer's auction and the vehicle had been traded in by the original owners um, and it seems to me, looking under the hood, that they had taken it to a mechanic to get some work done, probably because of the way it was driving. Uh, it obviously wasn't running right. And it seems to me that there's been some work done by that mechanic. Uh, he's changed the O-rings on the fuel injectors and he's put a new air filter in and some things like that. And those things all make sense to me, but I think he's then realized that the catalytic converter is the main culprit. And I am guessing that he's told the customers that this is gonna cost a lot of money to fix. Uh, he might've found a few other problems. So the customers have decided to just simply trade the vehicle in, buy something else. And this vehicle ended up at a dealer's only uh, vehicle auction. So I purchased a vehicle, it seems to be in great condition, but when I got it, it had three codes. It was throwing a code, I've forgotten the code number, but the code was for the EGR valve as, um, as not working. Now, the EGR valve is the electronic gas recirculation, or it can also be the electronic gas reticulation uh, valve. And uh, these often play up, and I was expecting to pay around $300 to buy a new one and replace it. But when I looked at the EGR valve, it was actually unplugged. So uh, I'd say that the last mechanic has uh, disconnected uh, the electronic, you know, the electrical connector, and he's done other things on the engine, and the customers have said, look, down tools, we're not gonna spend any more money on it. Uh, we're just gonna take it and sell it. And he's left that disconnected. Uh, also, one of the breather pipes on the bottom of the air uh, filter box was also off. So I simply reconnected the EGR valve um, connector and also um, re hooked up the breather hose for the, um, 
for the air filter on the air filter box and the vehicle started running a lot better and the EGR valve light went out but it left me with the two codes of P0420 and P0430 um, which is for um, the catalytic converter, the oxygen sensors, the first sensor one and, o and the oxygen sensor two uh, are well outside of their parameters and it's thrown the engine light on and uh, so today I'm going to show you how to fix that. I've been in the motor game now for over 30 years and I've owned around 3,000 vehicles. Uh, this is not the first time I've had to do this but it's the first one I've done in a couple of years. Now this time I'm going to use a product made by our friends, our friends in the United States. It's called Cataclean. Um, there's a few videos on how to use Cataclean. This is the first time I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm here in Australia and um, we're going to put this in and we're going to see what it does to restore the uh, drivability of this car and to see if we can get the engine light to go out and stay out. So come along, I'll show you what to do and let's see how we go. Okay. So as you can see the check engine light is on and it's actually flashing. And it's chiming there to tell me that it has detected a fault in the system. Now to get some idea of uh, how poorly this vehicle has been running, uh, I reset the uh, trip and um, the fuel economy switch uh, on my last trip. I've driven the vehicle for about half an hour and it says that I'm using an average of 15.7 litres per 100 kilometres. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, this vehicle should be using uh, more like tw um, 12 to 13 litres per 100 k's would be um, what you would expect to find. So I'm hoping that when I use the Cataclean in this system, it's going to greatly uh, increase power, acceleration, uh, get the engine light to go off and um, also to bring down the fuel consumption. Uh, that's a lot of uh, ask for something in a plastic bottle, um, but from experience, uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so I've just hooked up my trusty OBD2 scan tool, and it's showing me two different codes, which is exactly what I expected. Uh, it's showing me the P0420 and P0420, 430 codes. So both of these are to do with the catalyst system efficiency and it's below threshold on bank 2 and on bank 1. So bank 1 being the oxygen sensor in front of the catalytic converter and bank 2 being the, um, the oxygen sensor number 2 which is immediately after the catalytic converter so it's downstream. So it's detecting that the catalytic converter is just not functioning as it should, and it's exactly what I expected. And uh, we're going to um, add the cataclean now to the fuel tank, and we're going to um, uh, take the vehicle for a half hour drive. And when we come back, I would expect to see that those codes have either gone themselves or that I will be able to clear them and they won't come back. So, um, Let's go and get the Cataclean and we'll start now. Okay, so here's the product I've bought. This is uh, Cataclean. It's a 500 mil additive that you simply tip into your fuel tank. Um, there's two different types of Cataclean. This one is for petrol or gasoline engines. It comes with a green plastic lid. There is also one with a red plastic lid uh, which is made f uh, to be suitable for diesel engines. I've used both uh, before, they both work, um, but um, I've never actually used a full dose of this Cataclean. Someone gave me uh, about 200 mils in a bottle. I tipped that in and that did a great job. So this time I'm using for the first time a full bottle of Cataclean um, on this vehicle to see how we go. So uh, let's add it to the fuel tank and uh, we'll soon be going for a drive. So simply add the Cataclean to your fuel tank. This 500 ml bottle will suit 
uh, 15 litres of, uh, of petrol. So I've reduced the fuel tank down to about one eighth of a tank uh, because this vehicle has an 80 litre tank. Um, so we need to be under quarter of a tank of fuel. Um, on most cars, around about one quarter of a tank, if you have a four cylinder or uh, for most six cylinder vehicles, I would say around about a quarter of a tank or just under would be fine for adding your catechlean. And then uh, we're going off for a drive for about 30 minutes and we'll come back and check and see how things are going. I'm also going to reset now the, um, uh, the um, trip meter and the um, fuel consumption and we'll see if we can get better than 17.6 uh, liters per 100k it shouldn't be hard and also to see if the vehicle idles and runs better you may have seen before that when I was at the beginning uh, of this uh, video that when I was recording the um, the camera was shaking because the vehicle had such a rough idle I had the air conditioning on because it's pretty hot here in Australia at the moment um, heading into summer and uh, the camera was shaking uncontrollably sorry about that uh, because um, the, the vehicle's running rough because it's got a blocked cat. So hopefully when we come back, it's running smoother, has more power, and we're getting a lot better fuel consumption than 17.6. Okay, let's go. So, I'm about <clears throat> half a minute into the trip. So, um, it's gonna be very bouncy on these roads, so uh, bear with me. But, um, so I tried buying Cataclean here in Australia. I went on eBay, I went on Amazon, I went on many different sites. I couldn't find any, mainly because it's sold out. It's so popular, a lot of people are using it, and um, I wasn't able to source any here locally in Australia at the moment. But um, I found it in the, in the United States pretty cheap. It was only uh, 20 something dollars. Um, but they weren't willing to ship it to Australia. So that was a, a bit of a bummer. And um, so I went on to uh, eBay UK, found a lot of very good uh, suppliers in the UK uh, who were not only more than willing to ship it to Australia, but they told me that they have sent hundreds of bottles uh, of Cataclean to Australia and uh, Australia is one of their most uh, uh, common uh, customers. Um, so it wasn't expensive. I think the price I paid was about 16 pounds or about $30 uh, plus plus shipping so it cost me about 45 or 50 dollars to buy the 500 ml bottle of cattle clean and have it delivered here to Australia it, it took a bit over two weeks to get here um, I have had some products from the UK get here in four days and some have taken close to a month but I would allow around two weeks if you wish to buy something from the UK and have it shipped to Australia now um, uh, I wasn't sure if the product could be shipped overseas, you know, because I didn't know if it was flammable or a dangerous product or something like that. Um, but apparently it's, um, it's quite safe. It's, um, it's not actually fuel or flammable itself. It's an additive to the fuel. Uh, so um, it was quite safe to ship and it come very well packaged. Uh, there was no leaks or anything like that. And um, it arrived here safely. So if you can't find stock of Cataclean in your neck of the woods, then uh, yeah, I would look at getting it from eBay uh, USA or eBay UK, uh, depending on your geographic location. And um, yeah, so um, I'm holding up high hopes that this product is going to uh, do a good job on this Jeep today because um, it's a beautiful vehicle. Uh, it only has a minor problem, but shouldn't be too hard to fix. Now, a point to note is that when I found out that the catalytic converter on here was playing up, uh, the first thing I did, more for a bit of fun than anything, was I rang Chrysler Jeep here in Australia and asked them how much it would cost to put a new catalytic converter uh, on this vehicle. Uh, they told me that the last time they had, uh, they had done one of these vehicles, uh, there was no change out of $1,800. 
So there's no way I'm going to pay, and most people are not going to pay $1,800 to replace their catalytic converter on their car, um, especially when you can buy these vehicles for three, four, five thousand dollars. Um, yes, it can be worth 10, 12 grand, but most people, you know, I'd say an average one of these is worth probably less than five thousand dollars. People aren't going to pay upwards of two thousand dollars to uh, fix a block catalytic converter. So. Um, if you can fix it yourself in half an hour for less than $50, why wouldn't you? Now, I wouldn't say it was a downside uh, of using the Cataclean, but it's maintenance. What you need to do, they recommend that once you have cleaned your catalytic converter using one bottle of Cataclean, that you uh, use it occasionally as maintenance just to keep it running that way, uh, running good. So they're saying that um, I should use an, another bottle in three months time and I should probably have used in total four bottles in 12 months so basically they're saying a bottle now and a bottle every three months so that means it could cost me under $200 for the whole year uh, to fix this vehicle uh, keep it running well and to be honest this vehicle was getting so heavy on fuel and the, the fuel economy was so bad that um, I would be using more than $200 a year in excess fuel uh, just to keep the vehicle running roughly uh, with a block cat. So it's well worth the money to, um, to, you know, to clean your catalytic converter now and keep it clean by adding a bottle every three months. It's possible that you could get away with a bottle every six months. Um, you know, maybe two or three bottles in a year might be fine. I don't know. But today, if this fixes my vehicle for $45, uh, and I've saved, you know, close to $1,800, then I'll be very, very happy. Um, speaking to people who've used Cataclean before and have used all many, you know, many different products, all sorts of products, including uh, thinners, uh, paint thinners to, um, to clean their catalytic converter, uh, without a doubt, I would say nine out of 10 people swear by Cataclean. Uh, there's about 30% said to me that um, when they used the uh, thinners, they got a good result, but it made an awful smell. Um, they thought it was dangerous and they never felt safe using it. And it may have done as much damage as it did good. So um, if you can buy, like, you know, in the UK or the United States, if you can buy something for like $20 or 17 pound or something, why wouldn't you? It, it's, you know, uh, especially if it's the safe and uh, the effective way of fixing it. I'm just getting onto the motorway now and I'll be taking this vehicle up to 110 kilometres an hour which is around 68 miles an hour is the uh, maximum speed limit for my state of Queensland and um, I can already feel the vehicle I'm getting like a couple of coughs and bumps uh, not because and hiccups not because it's struggling or it's failing but it's sort of like coming good it's not quite good, it's coming good, it's not still not quite good. It, it feels to me like it's fixing itself. So I think we're only about seven minutes into the trip and I'm noticing something already. Uh, something else I'm noticing is at 100 kilometers an hour, the vehicle is doing less than 2,000 revs per minute. So I'm sitting on about 62 miles an hour and I'm sitting on about 1,850 revs per minute. Uh, that's quite good. I think I would have been sitting on 2,200 revs per minute uh, before I added the Cataclean, just from experience, because I go up and down this motorway, the M1 uh, daily. And um, so I'm noticing a bit of a difference already. Also feels like I'm not pressing down on the accelerator as hard to get up to speed. So that's gotta be uh, a good thing. Now, when I reset the, um, uh, the fuel consumption uh, calculator, it went from a 17.5 in my driveway up to 19.5 because uh, I wasn't going anywhere, I was just sitting in the driveway. Now I'm on the motorway, it basically got down to the 17.5, it sat there for about a minute, and now it's dropping, and it's dropping quickly. Um, it's down to 16.8, it's down to 16.6, it's down to 16.4. So. It's, um, now, of course, you will get better fuel economy sitting on the motorway and driving along, but I haven't seen that figure come down below about 16 and a half uh, 
litres per 100 kilometres um, in the time that I've had it, and it's still falling. So um, it's down to now to 16.1 litres per 100 k's. So already it's saving an average of 1.4 litres per 100 kilometres. So it's definitely working. So how does Cataclean work? Well, it's quite simple. If you imagine your catalytic converter as being like a little uh, muffler or a, an exhaust with some sort of uh, filter inside it, what you've got is uh, a fine mesh uh, filter or strainer that something like a tea strainer but it's quite fine and what its job is is to it's to pick up particles of uh, carbon pollution basically black pollution particles and uh, to trap them and its idea is basically to bend uh, to um, neutralize them and burn them off and put them out the exhaust pipe as something less toxic uh, and less bad to the environment. Uh, I'm just taking a back road now, so this is going to be quite bumpy. <laughs> just got off the motorway. So um, what happens is it becomes blocked up with uh, carbon buildup, something like the chimney of a fireplace. If you don't clean the flue of your chimney, you'll end up with smoke coming back in the room. And this is what's happening. The oxygen sensor number one is detecting that the uh, emissions are not flowing through the catalytic converter clearly and it's um, it's causing like a, a back, back pressure a backdraft and it's detecting that it's that the catalytic converter is not processing this carbon waste and doing its job so um, and also the, uh, the second oxygen sensor, which is further downstream after the catalytic converter, is detecting that what's coming out of there is just not quite right. It's not meeting emissions uh, standards. So uh, sorry if you can hear a whistling there. This particular Jeep actually happens to have a ragtop roof, a convertible um, electric ragtop roof, quite rare in Australia. And um, uh, as you know, convertibles whistle. So if you're hearing a lot of whistling going on, that's what it is. So fuel consumption now is down to 15.0 litres per 100 k's, and it's falling. Now, considering that I'm on a back road, um, I'm doing 60 kilometres an hour, uh, which is 36 miles an hour, it's not really going to be flooding a lot of fuel and a lot of uh, catalytic cleaner uh, through that filter because it's now not as pressurised. But even still, uh, the car's now down to 14.7 litres per 100 k's consumption. It's falling. Now that's quite normal uh, while you're out and about and driving around that your fuel and consumption gets better. But not to this point. I haven't seen it below uh, 16 something and now it's in the 14s and it's still falling. Um, and that's while I'm only doing a relatively low speed. So we're now about 11, 12 minutes into the trip. I'm not going to uh, have this turned on for the whole half an hour. So I'm gonna shut it off now. And then when you see me again, I'll be back at home. We're going to check it with the scan tool and see if it's done, it, done us any good. Fingers crossed. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so I've just got back from about 35, 40 minutes of driving and um, I ran the fuel down so low that I even had to call into a service station and uh, I just quickly put another 10 litres of fuel in the vehicle so I could get back home. Now, um, I've noticed a big difference. So firstly, the vehicle is idling slightly faster. I'd say it's idling at around 30 or 40 revs per minute faster than normal. There's uh, a huge difference in the acceleration. The vehicle really responds. Uh, before, when I used to, um, you know, plant my foot down, um, the car was like very asthmatic and wheezy. Um, it felt incredibly heavy and sluggish. Now it's responding really well. It feels, it takes off like a small four-cylinder car. It just feels like it has no weight um, and it effortlessly moves off. So that's great. Now, um, the check engine light is still on. Uh, I've been... I believe now that this system is one that you have to turn it off yourself um, and you know with a scan tool um, which I'm about to do now I do believe 
this vehicle is now driving so well that I don't think the check engine light is going to come back on again. Uh, if it does, I will let you know uh, later on um, in this video. So I want to show you now the difference in the fuel consumption from when I got in before. Um, it was averaging 17.5 litres per 100 kilometres. Um, I'll try and work that out into miles per gallon and list it on here. Now, I basically just did the same trip that I did before. Uh, so last week I reset the trip meter. I did a half hour drive or so and it was averaging 17.5 litres across that trip. Uh, as you saw earlier. Now, I've just done the same trip, maybe even slightly longer, and it included being stuck in um, school traffic. We have 11 schools in this area um, with something like about 10,000 students, and I got stuck in traffic. So that sent the fuel consumption up while I was sitting in traffic, and I had to drive uh, a few kilometers through the suburbs. Now, amazingly, the fuel consumption uh, on this trip and I reset it uh, as I was taking off it's down to 11.3 litres uh, consumption uh, per 100 kilometres and that's using 91 octane just for basic cheapest uh, fuel uh, that you can buy for uh, this V6 petrol so um, I haven't worked out what sort of percentage that is, but if that's what it's averaging now, that's huge. Uh, that's saving over six litres of fuel per 100 kilometres. It's faster, it's idling higher, the vibration and the, um, um, you know, just the shaking of the vehicle has gone. Acceleration is really smooth and I'm quite impressed. And that is in just 35 or 40 minutes of driving. So I think that's, the, for me, that's the best 45 Australian dollars that I could spend fixing this vehicle. As far as I'm concerned, it's fixed. And um, so I can really recommend this product, the Cataclean. Um, I think it's amazing. It's, um, you know, it's car maintenance in a, in a bottle. Very simple to use. I must point out, though, that this vehicle... <laughs> that this product is actually, um, uh, as you'll see there, it is uh, flammable. But uh, for some reason, I was able to get this shipped in, in the mail from the UK. Uh, that's, maybe that's why I couldn't import this from the States. Um, so you can buy this in Australia uh, when, when it's in stock, uh, but when it's not, it appears that you can get it out of the UK. And I highly recommend it. The difference I've seen already um, is mind blowing really. I couldn't think of anything that would, um, uh, anything else that would give that kind of results. So from me down under Daz, it's a big thumbs up and uh, let's hope that this sorts out your problems as well. Okay, all the best. See you later. Bye.